My 12-year-old cousin lost her life in my bedroom 23 years ago. I don't know how to tell this story without asking you a question. Have you ever heard of Mira? The girl who lives in the mirror? The first time I saw her, I was 10. My cousin was visiting. Her name was Amanda. She was two years older than me. Amanda stayed over at my house almost every other Saturday night, and she was the daughter my mother always wanted, a spoiled, rotten beauty queen in the making. And then one night, as we were getting ready for bed, Amanda pranced around the bedroom before finally stopping in front of the large mirror near the foot of my bed to apply a tube of red lipstick. I asked her why she was putting on makeup just before bed. She told me that in order for beauty sleep to work, you have to go to sleep pretty. Then she said, You know, you could do with some makeup to cover up that shit stain on your face. She was talking about the birthmark I was born with. I tried to hide my embarrassment, but I couldn't because, well, it's permanent. Amanda knew it was the reason I hated talking to people. Their eyes always linger to my birthmark. I can almost hear them thinking, Ugh, that's unfortunate. It has always made me feel like a circus freak. It's okay, not everyone can be pretty, you know, my cousin said under her breath, and it hurt. I watched in silence as Amanda moved from perfecting her lips to brushing her hair, only stopping in between to admire herself in the mirror. But something about Amanda's reflection wasn't right. <gasps> Amanda, I whispered. She turned her head to look back at me and my heart stopped. Her reflection didn't move with her. The person in the mirror was not Amanda. It wasn't her. It was a girl in a white dress with pale, dead eyes. She looked like she'd gone to hell and never made it back. She had a wide gash across her face, with flesh wound slits that started at the corner of her mouth and ran morbidly deep into her cheeks. I stared in horror, unable to move. Amanda was still looking back at me, but her reflection, the deformed girl, was blankly staring at her through the glass. The reflected girl's eyes were pearl white and lifelessly fixed on her position. Amanda, what's wrong with your reflection? I asked, choking on my words. She was facing me, telling me to cut it out while I watched the girl in the mirror pull out a small box from behind her back and remove a crisp razor blade. She casually placed it in her mouth and began to chew, still smiling blankly as if programmed to do so. Then we both heard it. It came from the mirror. Amanda immediately spun around to find Mira in the mirror. Suddenly, Mira's facial flaps opened up as skin flaps revealed a different kind of mouth. Two vertical rows of long, sharp, blood-stained teeth, surrounded by a gory mess of shredded meat and wet red flesh. Her two eyes remained in place and stared back at us while her bruised body made creepy Barbie-like motions. We were both in complete shock. Then Mira reached through the mirror and viciously pulled Amanda into her side of the reflection. <coughs> and I watched in horror as my cousin was held down on the mirrored floor by a gang of pale white eyeless human-shaped creatures that rose up from the ground in the mirror world. To my disbelief, Mira climbed out of the mirror and crawled across my bedroom floor on all fours. I backed into my bed, but I couldn't get away from her. In seconds, she was face to face with me. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't scream. Mira caressed my face with her hand and slowly edged my birthmark with her lifeless finger. She was touching the ugliest part of me. My insecurity. The shit stain that everyone laughed at and teased me about. I realized that was the first time anyone or anything had ever touched my mark. Amanda's muffled screams grew louder as pale faceless freaks continued to hold her down. Mira quickly scattered off the bed, crawled across the floor and returned to where she came from. 
the mirror. Mira crawled on top of my cousin, sealed her cold blue lips on Amanda's, and began to suck the insides out of her body. The pale white beings held on as Amanda's blood, organs, and life were completely drained from her. Mira continued until Amanda was nothing more than skin and bones. The suction pressure caused Amanda's skin to tightly seal over her bones until it either crushed them or it pierced through. Mira paused and looked directly at me. She smiled as she brought a finger up to her lips and whispered, Shh. Before regurgitating Amanda's blood and organs all over her side of the mirror, I finally screamed, startling my mother and father awake. They rushed in as quick as they could, but both Mira and Amanda were gone by then. My father called the cops after I told him what happened. I couldn't go near a mirror for a while after that. I was psychoanalyzed and treated for PTSD along with paranoid delusions. My cousin Amanda was never found. Her disappearance was thought to have been some kind of abduction that must have happened while I was sleeping. It took months of counseling and multiple therapists to convince me that what I saw was all in my head and that Amanda had in fact been kidnapped in the middle of the night. I started to believe what everyone told me instead of what actually happened. But something changed on my 14th birthday. I, I was given a new dressing table. And that night, I saw Mira again. She had returned in the mirror. She was holding my cousin's dried out, shrunken, severed head. There was a birthday candle in the center of Amanda's head dripping hot wax down her forehead. Mira blew it out and the room went dark. Watch new vids every Monday and Wednesday and new chapters from the Crypt Monster Universe every Friday. Only on Crypt TV.